Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn how to display user's location on a map in SwiftUI for iOS 14. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to obviously find the user's location. And this is done by a location manager. So I'm going to go over here and add a new group. I'll call it managers. And I will create a custom file. I will call it location manager. This can be a simple Swift file. That's perfectly fine. And let's go ahead and call this location manager. Keep in mind that we are using Xcode 12 beta. Okay. The first thing I would do is I will import core location. And now I can go ahead and create a class called location manager. This is more of a wrapper class that we are creating, which is going to be exposing different properties of the CL location manager. And we will call this, or we will also use the observable object so we can observe the changes. I'm going to go ahead and say that create an instance of location manager. This will be the actual location manager. This will allow us to get the updated coordinates. And I will go ahead and create a published property, which will be called location, which will be location. And we will initialize it with optional. Now, when we create an instance of our location manager, we will initialize the location manager, which is already initialized. So we will go ahead and set the desired accuracy, distance filter, request authorization, start updating location, and the most important, the setting up of the delegate. So let's go ahead and create our initializer. I'm going to say override the init function, which is overriding the NS object init function. And the first thing we should do is always call the super initializer, which is initializing the NS object. So if you go into NS object, uh, whatever the definition is, you can see that we are initializing that one, who is the parent. Next up, we can go ahead and initialize the location manager. So I can go ahead and say location manager dot desired accuracy. And you can use any kind of accuracy over here. I'm just going to go with the best one. Now, if you keep the accuracy best, it may also means that it is going to take a while to find your correct location. Now, when I say it's going to take a while, it doesn't mean it's going to take like five minutes, but it's going to take a little bit more time if the accuracy was not best, if it was something else. But right now we're just using best. You can also use best for navigation, best for something else. That is perfectly fine. Next up, we're going to say distance filter. Is our location finding basically depends on some sort of a distance filter that it has to be greater than or less than. We're just going to say nothing. Distance filter is none. Next up, location manager dot request always authorization. So we're just going to go ahead and say either you can use request always authorization or when in use authorization is completely up to you. Next up, we're going to call start updating the location. So start updating location. This is going to start the events that is going to give us the updated location. And finally, we can go ahead and set the delegate equals to self. And this is actually very, very important. If you don't set the delegate to self, uh, then it means that you will never get any functions or any kind of delegate events that are happening in the CL location manager. And one of those delegate events is the date update location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extension of the location manager. And that extension is going to be using the location manager delegate. It doesn't really have to be inside an extension, but just to structure the code in a nice way, we are just using the location manager as a uh, extension. And the function that we want to implement is the did update locations. We will get number of locations. So what we are going to do is we are simply going to try to get the last location that we got. So location equals to locations dot last, and we will unwrap it. Else, well, else nothing we can do. We'll just return it from there. So once we have the location, we can set the location, which is what we declared. 
And since on line number 14, we created our location variable with the property wrapper published, whenever we change this or assign this a new value, it is going to trigger an event and we can subscribe to that event or everyone can listen to that, whoever is interested. Since this is a published property, it is always a good idea to set this property inside or on the main thread. So self.location equals to location. And over here, I'm using self so that I am targeting the property that we declared over here. Let's go ahead and build it. So this will be our location manager, which we can use inside our content view. So let's go ahead and jump onto the content view and see that how we can use the location manager. Now, a couple of other things that we need to do is we need to change our or update our info.plist file so that we are asking for the right permission. So let's go ahead and open up info.plist. And I can go ahead and add multiple keys over here. So the first key that I'm going to add is right here. NS location always and when in use description. So over here we can say something like this app requires access to your location. Obviously in your application, make sure that this is a little bit more descriptive and not just this app requires access to your location, uh, but a more descriptive. There is another key, which is location when in usage description. In our case, we don't really need that key, but I am still going to add that so that you know that there is a key like that. And this is also, this app requires access to your location. Now these are different keys. One of them is location always and when is usage, usage description and when in usage description. So the second one is basically for always. And the first one is when in use description. And you may have already seen it when, whenever you're trying to access a photo or location, you can access it for one time only, or you can access it for the uh, un unforeseeable future, meaning one time and you can just access it later on. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. We are in the content view and now we are going to use our location manager. There is another file that you will see that has been added and we are going to take a look at it a little bit later on. It's nothing complicated. It's just a it provides default values to the MK coordinate region and it's an extension. So don't worry about it too much. We're going to see it in a second. So inside the content view, we have to use the location manager so we can get the updated location. So I'm gonna go over here and I will say observed object, private var location manager equals to location manager. Okay, so I'm creating an instance of the location manager. And when we create an instance of the location manager, all of this code is going to get fired and we will start updating the location which means that whenever we find a new location, we are going to call this delegate function, which is did update location, and is going to set the location. Whenever the location is set, since it is marked with published right here, it is going to throw an event, and then whoever is listening can subscribe to that event and perform some action. The next up, we're gonna create a region, var, region equals to, and we will go ahead and create an MK coordinate region. Now we have to create a region in order to feed this to the actual map control in Swift UI 2.0. Now we can create the region right over here, but it's a little bit messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a default region function, which is an extension, and it is going to give us some sort of a default region. If you go and check out the implementation of the default region, you can see that we are hard coding some coordinates. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to our content view and let's go ahead and build it. Everything is building fine. Now what we want to do is when the view actually appears, we want to go ahead and set the current location. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire the onAppear function 
And inside the on appear, I'm going to fire my own custom function, which is called set current location. Now, obviously, this function doesn't really exist. We still have to implement this. So let's go ahead and jump over here and implement it. We're going to also make it private because we don't really want anyone from the outside calling this particular function. Inside set current location, we are going to subscribe to the location manager dot location changes. If you go to the location manager and you check out this property, which is location, it is marked with published, which means that whenever you change or assign this property, it is going to throw an event and we can subscribe to that event. Now, there are obviously multiple ways of subscribing. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just say location manager dot dollar sign location so that we will get access to the publisher dot sync and this is going to give us the location and now we can use this location uh, to create our new region which is i can k i can say mk coordinate region and i can go ahead and provide a center which in this case will be a location location dot coordinate or if that is for some reason no, then we can go ahead and create a new location coordinate. We have to provide some sort of a latitudinal meters. So I'm going to say 500 by 500 so as a default. Now, right now, this sync function is going to return you something, but we are not using anything over here to hold this kind of a subscription. So in order to hold the subscription, we will create any cancelable and we will simply assign the cancelable over here. This is going to hold our subscription, hold our publisher, so it doesn't get lost. All right, so now we can go ahead over here in our view and we can perform some action. So I'm gonna remove the text and I'm going to say if the location manager dot location is not equal to nil, then go ahead and create a map. And in iOS 14, there is a map control. And obviously you can see there are many different ways to create the map control. I'm gonna use this one because it also gives you a user location. Let's go ahead and pass in the region, interaction modes. It's gonna say all, show region or show location, yes. User tracking mode, that's gonna say no. Else, if that is not possible, then we'll just say locating user location. Now keep in mind that we are not really handling cases like um, you know the location is denied or these kind of things. We're not really handling those things right now. The other thing we should do is probably put it inside some sort of a stack. There we go. And let's go ahead. There we go. And with all of this in place, let's go ahead and run our application and see that if the location is determined or not. And there we go. We can actually see the location and it is displaying correctly because I have set over here in the location that I'm at Apple. Obviously, if you run this application into your actual iPhone, then it will show you the location of where you are. So you might be in Houston, you, you might be in Seattle, wherever you are it's going to show you the location. So in this video, you learn about how to use the location manager and how to show the user's location in a Surf UI application.